What's up guys, welcome back. Playing around with skin tones is a great way to inject some personality into your painting. There's endless variety to be found from the very pale to the very dark. Having a solid understanding of how to create your own skin tones from scratch will not only dig you out of a hole when you run out of your favourite skin tone paint, but it's going to improve your understanding of colour, making you a more rounded and better painter. In order to create your own skin tones, you're going to need four basic paints. Red, blue, yellow and white. Don't worry about what brands of paint these are or the exact colour that I'm using, that doesn't really matter. Try not to worry about following formulas or hunting down specific paints so that you can copy something exactly. Painting should be an organic process, remember that it's an art, it's not a science. Trust your instincts, let your eyes tell you what's right and wrong. When I held up my fingers, what was your first impulse? Well, it was stupid. Just tell me. Pick my own finger. Aha! That was the correct answer. You lack faith in yourself. So when you're doing this, first you're going to need to create a basic brown tone. To do that, we're going to take roughly equal amounts of the red, blue and yellow and mix them together. Now when you're doing this, you're going to run into some problems. So I'm going to show that first, then we'll take a look at a simple way to correct it. You'll see that this brown is a little bit murky looking. Generally we would add some white to get our base tone, but you can see that it's a little dull. That's because our colour is a little too heavy on the blue side. If we mix some more white in to get our highlight colours, you should be able to tell that using these on a model would end up looking quite unnatural. So how do we fix that? Well the key is to start off with a nice lively looking brown tone. When you're mixing your colour, you'll be met with three situations. The paint will either look too green, to purple or to orange. Let's start off with the first problem, what to do if the paint is too green. Mixing blue and yellow together will create green, so clearly this is way too green for our needs. In order to fix that we'll simply add some red. So you can see it's still a bit on the green side so we'll put a bit more red in there. And I'd say that's about right. So we've we'll solved the first problem, if your paint is too green, add red. The next dilemma we'll face is when the colour goes to purple. So let's look at that now. I'll mix up a very obvious purple using red and blue. Clearly you wouldn't want to use this for most skin tones, it's way too purple. But if we add some yellow, we'll bring the colour back to that nice brown tone. You can see that it's now roughly the same as the first mix that we made. The last situation you'll face is when the colour gets too orange. So I'll mix up an orange with some red and yellow. And hopefully you should be able to work out what colour to add at this point. But if you're a little confused, don't worry. When the paint gets too orange, you're simply going to add some blue. Alright, so to recap, if the colour is too green, we add red. If it's too purple, add yellow. And finally, if it's too orange, add blue. Alright, so let's have a go at putting this into practice and see how we can use it to create some flesh tones. We'll start off pretty basic and then move on to some more advanced approaches. So again, we want to create our initial brown tone using roughly equal amounts of red, blue and yellow. I'll do that now by grabbing a little red and then I'll add some blue, giving us this nice purple, and then we'll add some yellow. It's a bit too orange, so if you remember from before, when it goes to orange, add some blue. And now it's starting to go purple, so we'll mix in some yellow to correct it. And now it's verging more into a green tone, so we'll fix that by adding some red. Yep, and that looks about right to me. Alright, so to create our base colour, we'll add some white to lighten it. There you can see that we're going to get quite a good starting colour. For our highlights, rather than just mixing white in, you can make them a bit more lively looking by adding just a touch of yellow. And then you can use that mix to create highlights by simply adding progressive amounts of white into it. But for now, we're not too worried about that. Let's say you want some rosy cheeks or a bloodshot nose or maybe a decent colour for lips. Just take a small amount of red and mix it into your base tone and you'll get a really good pink that'll work well with your overall skin tone. <laughs> I'm kind of running out of paint here so give me a sec and I'll mix a little white into the brown to get some more of that base tone. Alright so let's say you want a shadow colour. Take some of your blue and mix it right into your base tone. That's going to give you a really great colour for adding some subtle shading. You can also use this for getting a pretty decent 5 o'clock shadow on a male character. 
Okay, so that is how you get all the basic tones you're going to need for painting a nice balanced skin tone. Let's look at another way of getting to that basic skin tone. I'll show you another one of the problems that you're going to run into. So when you're mixing your initial brown, sometimes it can be a little hard to tell what the colour is doing when you mix the white in. An easy way to get around that is to just throw some white in there at any point. For example, we're nowhere near brown at the moment, but I'll put some white in to lighten it anyway. So that's going to give us this really pale purple colour. Can you remember what colour we add when the paint is too purple? If you said yellow, you're correct. So let's add some yellow now and see what happens. Alright, so what about now? What colour do you think it is? <laughs> it's not obvious, is it? This is an issue that you're going to come across when you're doing this yourself but it's actually quite easy to fix. If ever you add a colour and you get stumped as to what you need to add next, just add a bit more of that same colour. In our case it was yellow, so we'll mix in a bit more yellow and see what happens. Alright, can you tell now? To me it looks like it's going slightly green, and when it goes green we add red. So let's do that now. It's starting to get a little darker, so we'll mix in some white to see where we're at. We could use this as a flesh tone as it is, but it's still a little bit dull looking. To make it look a bit more lively, we can use a little yellow. So again, we could use this, but it's a little bit greenish. So our model could end up looking slightly ill, which is fine if that's what you're going for. But if we're using our rules from before, we know that when it starts to go green, we simply add a bit of red. So if we do that now, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so now it's a bit less ill looking. Maybe we can add a touch more red. There we go. I think that looks really good now. So you can see that you don't need to hit your perfect colour straight away. You can play about with it for as long as you need. Giggity. Remember that we started off with that dark purple and look where we are now. So that's just by following these three basic rules. If it's too green, add red. If it's too purple, add yellow. And if it's too orange, add blue. So rather than me just going, it's easy, just mix these three colours, ta-da! Hopefully showing you all the ways it's going to go wrong is going to make it a lot easier for you to learn how to do it. Alright, so when you're doing the highlights, you don't need to add the yellow first. If you like, you can just mix in the white like this to get a couple of highlight colours. Adding a small amount of yellow will give you a better result, but it's not 100% necessary. Okay, so like in the other example, mixing a bit of blue into your base tone will give you a decent shadow colour. And if you want to deepen that some more, mix a little red on top and that will give you a subtle purple which will look really good as a second shade colour. Alright, so this is all well and good if you want a pale skin tone, but what do you do if you want something darker? It's actually not as tricky as you might first think. So just like we did with our lighter skin tones, we're going to start off by mixing a basic brown tone by adding roughly equal amounts of yellow, blue and red. Right, so instead of adding white to get our base tone, we're just going to use this brown mix to get our base tone. And to get the highlights, we're going to mix in some white, and then so that the highlights don't get too flat and washed out, we're going to add some yellow in there to brighten it up a bit. Then you can mix a bit more white in to get the rest of your highlights. So that's going to give you quite a nice basic palette for a darker skin tone and you can experiment with adding different amounts of uh, yellow to intensify the colour in the highlights. If you want something even darker, just start again in the same way, mixing up a basic brown and then you're going to add some black to darken it. Now you can make this as dark as you like, it's, it's really up to you and it depends on how dark you want your skin tone to be. For our highlights, we'll do the same thing as before, adding a little white and yellow for the first highlight, and then just adding white to get a couple more highlight colours. If you want to add a shadow colour, much like in the paler skin tones, we'll create a purple tone by mixing a little red into our base tone, followed by a little blue. Then if you want a slightly darker shade, just add a small amount of black to darken it down. Again, the amount you darken it is totally up to you. And we'll do exactly the same thing for the darker skin tone. Mixing up a purple by adding some red and blue into the base colour. And then darkening it down with some black. Alright guys, so that is the basics covered. Now we're going to look at a slightly more advanced approach. This time we're going to use complementary colours for our base and highlights. First off, we need to know what a complementary colour is. So I think I've gone over this in an earlier video, but it's, it's worth going over it once again. If you take a look at this colour wheel, 
complementary colours sit directly opposite each other on the wheel. For example, red is sat directly opposite to green, blue sits opposite to orange, purple sits opposite to yellow, and so on. In colour theory, these are considered to be opposite colours, and when they're placed next to each other, they give the maximum amount of contrast. In miniature painting, you're always chasing to find ways of increasing contrast and using complementary colours is a fantastic way to do that. Alright, so now that you know what a complementary colour is, we'll have a look at how we can apply them to skin tones. The basic idea is to start with a base tone that is pushed slightly towards a certain colour. So for example, slightly orange or slightly green or red, etc. I'll show that now by mixing a slightly orangey brown. Basically, we're going to mix a skin tone that is slightly more red and yellow than normal. So something like this should be okay. You can see that it definitely has a bit of an orange tint to it, but not so much that it's going to look like a bad spray tan. I don't like the look of it. Now on the colour wheel, the complementary colour to orange is blue. So what we're going to do is mix a small amount of blue into some white, and we'll use that as our highlight colour. But first we'll use some of the white to lighten the skin tone just to get our initial base colour. Then for the highlights we'll grab some of that blue mix and just add it into our skin tone. And you can see that it gives quite a nice highlight. Now if you wanted to make the blue a bit more obvious, you can just simply add more blue into your white. And again mixing that into your base colour is going to give you a really interesting highlight. It's a little difficult to appreciate it on the palette by itself, but if you try this out on a model, you'll see that it works out really well. Alright, so let's try that again with another skin tone. This time we'll make a slightly reddish colour, just by adding a little more red than we normally would. Alright, so then we'll mix a bit of white to get our base colour. You can see that it's way more red than the other skin tone. And if we consult our trusty colour wheel again, you can see that the complementary colour to red is green. So we'll just mix a green for the highlight. Now blue and yellow makes green, which we'll add to some white to get a really light green. And we'll mix that into our base colour. And a little bit more. And then you're just going to keep adding more of that green each time that you want a new highlight. And it's going to give you this really interesting colour variation. It has a really sort of a pastel-like quality. I really like it. Alright, so I think you get the idea behind this now, but we'll do one more just to sort of hammer it home. This time with a purple skin tone. Make it more of a fantasy skin tone this time. You could probably use it for like a dark Eldar or something. Alright, so now that we've got our base tone, we'll mix a highlight just by adding some yellow into the white. Again, we're using yellow because it's the complementary colour of purple. Alright, so if we add that into the purple, you can see that you get this really nice range of different colours. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll have seen me use this sort of complementary idea on a few models. It's really fun to play about with. So if you're going to try this out, I can recommend just putting those four colours onto your palette and taking a bit of time to experiment and see how many different variations that you can come up with. If you can get better at mixing your own skin tones, it's going to have a really big knock-on effect on the rest of your paintings. I can't recommend it highly enough. Alright guys, so I hope that gives you some new ideas that you can wrap your head around. Thank you for supporting the channel and thanks once again for taking the time to watch the video. Take it easy. Bye for now.